uh, Bellator NYC. It was Bellator 180. That's technically what they called the free televised card that was on Spike before the pay-per-view. And then, of course, the pay-per-view was uh, Bellator Silva versus Sonnen. Let's start with the main event and work our way, ba- our way uh, backwards, Frank. A good friend of the show and a, uh, a sometimes co-contributor of ours, Chael Sonnen, the American gangster, finally settled a score with Vanderlei Silva, and the story of this fight was uh, Sonnen's takedowns. Uh, the axe murderer had no answer for that. Uh, Sonnen took him down at will, held him there, and uh, accumulated his points on the ground, won a unanimous decision, 30-27 on two judges' scorecards, and even got a 10-8 round, 30-26 on uh, one of the other cards. What were your thoughts on the fight? Yeah, I agree. I thought that it was awesome that, uh, you know, Chell was able to go out there and do exactly what was necessary. You know, uh, you know, work enough stand-up just to blast with those doubles, get the fight to the ground. And, and it wasn't like it was completely, uh, you know, a technical overpowering. I mean, he also got clipped a little bit behind the ear there. At, True. You know, towards the middle of the first round. And uh, had to fight back and recovered, came back up, took down uh, Vanderlei. And I think he just showed that you know, technically he's the superior fighter. Yeah, uh, you know, Vanderlei was pretty frustrated at the end of the fight. I think he was hoping for a, a, a stand-up war and definitely expressed his frustrations, may, maybe even a little uh, too much. So there was a there was a shove after the fight, and uh, I, I think I saw at least one kind of after-the-bell shove getting up off the ground from Vanderlei. I don't know uh, how proactive the State Athletic Commission is going to be on that. But, um, you know, we, we've seen that type of objection before from the stand-up fighter who says, ah, oh, that sucks, you know, the, the wrestler wasn't uh, willing to stand and trade with me. He wasn't brave enough to do it. He, he just wanted to hold me down. But, uh, you know, the answer to that always seems to be, well, whose fault is it if you can't stop the takedown? Yeah, absolutely. If you, uh, you know, if you want to do a stand-up fight, I've always thought that was funny when I hear stand-up guys like, would you stand in front of me? I'm all, hey, you know, they have shit for that. It's called boxing. Yeah. Oh, kickbox. Uh, no one's going to be shooting on you now. And if you want to stand there and bang with somebody, uh, they'll stand there and bang with you, too. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it was still cool from my perspective to see the fight, albeit however many years have passed now, th- four maybe, since... Uh, these two were originally supposed to meet back in the UFC after they coached uh, the Ultimate Fighter against each other, and then that fight got uh, got called off. It was still pretty cool to to see him in there. Um, I, I thought, particularly in the uh, the post fight comments of Sonnen, you know, as much Frank as we have seen Chael play that role before of the the trash talker and the fight promoter and the hype guy, something about Chael Sonnen in you know this latter end of his career looks to me like he's even going more so that direction i mean it's like the the post fight promos now are are unapologetically uh full on pro wrestling yeah i mean he takes out almost even just like a really just promoter for the whole show i think some of the fighters would have to start giving him a percentage of the purses for what he's able to do to help sells just not only himself but he sells the card he sells the other fighters he uh you know he brings attention i mean he's uh he's you know uh, i think a promoter's uh you know uh wet dream yeah i think so too and even though it was a a one-sided unanimous decision i think because of some of the other outcomes that we saw on the card and we'll talk about those as we go but the fact that there were a lot of early finishes there were uh, in at least in one particular high-profile case, kind of a, a freak injury finish that was disappointing. I think it was kind of good that the card concluded on a war of attrition, that we did see th- you know three full quality uh, rounds from the names at the top of the marquee, even though the, the contest w- wasn't close. You agree with that? I do. I think that, you know, I mean, there's uh, something to be said about fights that end fast. But I think, too, that the whole card kind of goes that way. Um, you know, especially, you know, we're not talking about, you know, first or second, you know, second or third round finishes, but, right. you know, being choked up in 24 seconds in the first round. Um, I, I think that it helps 
you know, satisfy people's need to watch uh, a fight and see people out there. And, and definitely, you know, Chael wasn't a, uh, you know, he doesn't have a boring style. I think that his grappling was very entertaining. When he takes you down, he's working to punch on you. If anybody wants to complain about like, lack of action on the ground, that was more on Vandalay's Ch- part. He held the uh, box of the arm and guillotine there. You know, going to was basically just doing stall. Hey, Frank, you're you're starting to break up. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Get, go back. Rewind thirty seconds, because I kind of lost the last uh, half minute or so of what you were saying. No, I was just saying that um, you know, the Chael has a very you know entertaining style of grappling. And I think that if, uh, you know, if you watch the fight, when he gets the takedowns, he's working to, to you know, ground and pound, go for submissions. He, he's very active on the ground. If anybody wants to complain about, you know, the fight, you know, losing a little activity on the ground, it really was in uh, Van Lee Silva's court. He, uh, you know, he locked the front headlock or guillotine there in the second round and, you know, basically had no intentions of trying to finish it. He's just looking up at the referee and trying to take deep breaths and recover and was trying to stall in the area that Chael was good at. So, I mean, it's a strategy. I mean, it's part of the fight game, but you can't complain about it. Uh, you know, those are the rules there are. Well, uh, you know, the the question now becomes, in the case of Chael Sonnen, who he fights next. Uh, Tito Ortiz was cage side, and it kind of looked like in the, the wake of the Sonnen victory that they were setting up for a, an Ortiz call-out. Of course, uh, Sonnen lost to Ortiz via submission just a few months ago, but uh, the possibility of that rematch is uh, one option on the table. Then uh, people, some were saying, well, do you do Vanderlei again? Uh, I don't know. The fight certainly wasn't very close, but the two of them could could uh, probably resurrect the trash talk enough to, uh, you know, build hype for, for a second fight, maybe. Then the mystery guest in all this was the name that Chael Sonnen mentioned himself, which was Fedor Emelianenko, uh, after Fedor was was KO'd by Matt Mitrione. Now, he was asked about that in the post-fight press conference, and Fedor said, well, we're in different weight classes. I guess if Chael cut absolutely no weight, he could he could come in as the very lightest of heavyweights, uh, perhaps. But uh, what do you think about those two? three options what's what's appealing to you if if any of them for chael well i think that you know vandalay missed an opportunity to really uh showcase the fact that he wants a second fight because even though that you know i, I think that uh, it'd be interesting watching rounds four or five and six with him that you know vandalay so hits hard you saw an example of him glancing the shot off of uh, chael that you know, he, you know he's always very much in the fight if he can get to his feet uh, but he doesn't sell the fight. He did no promotional work. He's not willing to fly out of his hometown to help sell the fight. It doesn't work. And, you know, as a promoter, you realize that the fighters have to do their share of uh, the labor, you know, to get eyes on your event, to help sell pay-per-view buys. And so Vandalay did not do his share of any work. He showed up to the fight because that's his strength, but, you know, um, that just wasn't enough, in my opinion. I think that, you know, you have someone like Chael Sonnen, you have to give him someone on the other side. So, uh, out of those three options, I think Tito Ortiz coming out of retirement, some of the banter and the shit talking that was going on outside the cage during and after the fight, I think it makes huge sense, you know. Uh, I think that that's the one that will, uh, you, know, you know, I think the first one in very controversially, you know, like did Tito tap, did not, he caught Chael, you know. Uh, I think the second one um, would uh, garner a lot of attention, especially with knowing that Tito is a constant businessman that fucking sells the fight. He's going to show up at the press conference. He's going to be there. He's not going to make excuses or use his phone in the bathroom, uh, you know, halfway around the world. Uh, and so, um, you know, and then the talk about the Fedor fight, the only problem I have with that is, can Chael really sell that fight? I mean, I know that it'd be Fedor, you know, still draws uh, people's attention. And I think that as far as if they walk in the fight together, once you start the fight, I find it interesting, you know, I, I think that, you know, obviously, you know, uh, uh, Fedor is a very small heavyweight, you know, he's made light heavyweight before he fought Dan Henderson in the past. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think that a catch weight of 230, Jail walks around about that, I think is uh, not a, uh, 
you know, a, a stretch of the imagination. It's just leading up to the fight. You know, I think it'd again, it'd be a situation where it would be completely on the shoulders of Chael to try to bring attention and sell it. To the level, maybe, uh, you know, Fedor doesn't have to do much anyways. I mean, he's the, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, what's the role he has of, of sports, you know, um, oh, uh, yeah, sport there. Minister, Minister of uh, Sport, I think it is, over in Russia.